Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today's project is made for shades. We're making this sunglasses case here, and this is using my fabric from my new line, Blooms and Bobbins. As soon as this is available, I'll have links for where you can purchase this below, but because I designed it, I get the early access to the fabric. The cool thing about this sunglasses case is the opening. It's got this snap opening so you can put your sunglasses inside and then let go and it snaps shut. This is actually made using a measuring tape and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and what materials you need. Alright, let's take a look at the supplies. So I have my outer fabric and my lining fabric. These are cut to nine inches wide by 11 inches tall. And for the outer fabric, since I'm using quilting cotton, I have added fusible interfacing to the back of it. I also have the side tab here. This is two inches wide by two and three quarter inches tall. And just like the outer fabric, this is interfaced as well have a piece of quilt batting that's going to be the padding for this case. This is seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And then I have my measuring tape. So when you buy measuring tapes, they can come in either metal or plastic outer casings. I generally tend to get the plastic ones if I'm going to do this because they're easier to take apart. Usually they're going to have screws on the back side and you just use a little screwdriver, unscrew those, and the casing will come apart into two pieces. And then this is what's in the middle. You can see that I have put tape on this edge and that's because the metal of the measuring tape here sticks out and it can be really sharp and cut you. So this is just kind of protective while I'm working on it. And then here is the actual measuring tape. Without the casing, this doesn't stay coiled. That's why I have it taped to stay on the roll for next time that I want to use it. I also have the little clip here. You can use this kind of clip to attach or you can use like a lobster swivel claw type clip. Either one will work. I've got washi tape out because once I cut my pieces of the measuring tape, they're going to have sharp edges and I'm going to want to cover those with some tape just to make sure to kind of protect myself from the sharp edges. And I've also got ruler and pencil and regular scissors. These are not my fabric scissors. These are what I'm going to use to cut the measuring tape. And let's look at how to cut the measuring tape. Because this already has inches marked out on it, it's really easy to just determine how much you need and cut it. So I'm going to be cutting four inch pieces for this casing. So cut right there. You can see it cuts fairly easily. And I'll cut another piece here. And then take my roll up for next time I want to make one of these. Once you have these little pieces here, I like to round off the corners a little bit kind of cut diagonally. Be careful and make sure all these little metal bits that you're cutting off get thrown away. And then I use the washi tape and just tear some pieces off around the edges and cover those sharp edges. You can also use painter's tape, masking tape, basically anything. I just have washi tape handy, but basically anything to kind of dull those edges. There we go. It doesn't have to be a bunch, just so that I can't poke myself or cut myself on those edges if I'm touching them. So the next step is actually going to be to attach the quilt batting to my lining. And to do that, I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch up from the bottom edge of my lining. And that's where I want my quilt batting to go. You can also use fusible batting or fusible, um, like flex foam for this. That works really well too. So we're going to put this here and I'm just going to center it. And I'm going to add like a couple pins on the right side. 
to hold it in place. But mostly what I want to do so that it won't shift is that I'm going to very quickly quilt and I'm actually just going to go in between the stitching lines on this pattern and um, do just a few lines so that this doesn't shift around. So let's take this over to the machine. And I've got dark blue thread, so I'm just going to sew on the dark blue lines. looks like when you're done and you can trim off all those threads. Okay next let's work on the tab for the side here. So you're going to take your piece of fabric for the tab and fold it in half matching those long edges and you want to press this. Then you're going to open it up and you're going to fold the two raw edges in to meet that crease line in the center and press and then fold the whole thing in half and press again. So all your raw edges on the long edges are to the inside. And then we're going to stitch this. And when I am stitching something like this, it's going to have a very small edge. I like to hand crank my machine and make sure that the bobbin thread is pulled up. So that I can hold those threads to the back of the machine and just kind of help pull it under the feed box. Also because I'm going to be stitching right on this edge, I want to put my needle as far over that way as I want it to stitch instead of moving my fabric. This way my fabric has a lot of contact with the feed dogs under the presser foot and I can still get a stitch right on that fabric edge. And here is what that looks like when I'm done. And then just go ahead and cut off the extra thread. Now we're going to take this little tab that we made, loop it through the clasp or clip like this. And then you want this to attach to the outer fabric. So I used contrast for my tab, but you can use the outer fabric if you want. You need to measure on your outer fabric two and a half inches down from the top and one quarter inch in from the side edge. And that's where you're going to want to pin this. Okay, once you've got that done, then we are going to take this over to the sewing machine and we need to stitch this little piece in place. and backstitch over it as well. Once that is stitched, we are going to place this and the lining fabric right sides together. We're going to leave a hole on one side seam here and then we're going to stitch all the way around the other side seams using a one half inch seam allowance. And here's what it looks like when you've done that stitching and you've got a gap here. So. Now what we want to do is clip the corners so that we'll be able to turn this. And then you want to turn this right side out. You can use a point turner tool to get all the way into those corners and get them really turned out. And I will have the point turner tool link 
in the description below the video. All right, here's what this looks like, turn right side out. Now what you're going to want to do is blind stitched this opening close, and I'm not gonna show that on this video if you don't know how to do a blind stitch or a ladder stitch to close that up. I've got another video, and I will have a link to it below that you can watch to close that up. And then after I stitch this close, I'm going to go ahead and take this to the ironing board and press the edges, and then we'll pick this back up here. Okay y'all, once you have finished pressing and stitching up that gap, this is what it should look like. And side note, if you noticed earlier that the sewing machines were upside down, they were, and that was fixed while I was working on this off camera. So the next step is to make sure to put in the casing for the measuring tape pieces. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fold this down and you want to use your measuring tape piece as a gauge for how wide that should be and um, leave yourself a little bit of room so that you can insert the tape and still stitch along that edge. And side note, this can be pinned to whichever side you'd like. So if you happen to want the outside of your case to have a contrast around the top, which I think I like the way that looks and I'm going to do that, you just fold this to the outside instead of to the inside. You want to backstitch at the beginning and end of the casing. Once you've gotten to this point, then it's time to stick the two tape edges in. So just stick one in from each side and make sure that you've got a quarter inch on the edges where you're going to be stitching here. Then fold this in half, wrong sides together, and we're going to be stitching down those two open edges. Now, because this is a little bit thicker at this point, I like to use the clips instead of pins to hold this closed. All right, I find that it is easiest to start at that bottom corner, and just like we did when we top stitched, I'm gonna put this under the presser foot, and like I did with the tab, I'm going to move my needle all the way to the right so I could stitch right on that edge but still have all the fabric under the feed dogs and the presser foot. Begin stitching and back stitch. If you have a self-leveling foot, this is a great place to use it. And if you don't know what a self-leveling foot is, I've got a video linked below to show you exactly how that works. Okay, double check your tape once you get up here because you will break a needle if you hit that tape with the needle. So go really slow here and stitch over. You're going to want to either back stitch on that or what I like to do is flip this around and stitch it from the other side as well. Okay, here's what this looks like when it's done. And so trim off threads. And then here's the fun part, you get to use it. So stick your fingers in, and snap that tape, and you can hold it open. You can stick your sunglasses in and then let go and it snaps itself closed. So your sunglasses are not gonna escape and they're not gonna get out unless you're in there and you are opening the pouch.